We the people of Shanghai, like the people throughout our country, welcome this positive action which conforms to the common desire of the People's Republic of China and the United States. Unknown speaker. The Chinese made it clear that they welcomed America by inviting an American ping pong team playing in Japan to visit China. Nixon was about to lift a 20-year trade embargo when the invitation to China was issued. China was trying to open its doors to other parts of the world since their communist takeover in 1949. Mao decided to re-establish relations with the United States in hopes of counterbalancing the Soviet military on the Chinese border. Ping pong matches helped build the foundations of a new relationship between China and the U.S. The Chinese government allowed American and Canadian reporters into the country to cover the event. The American ping pong team was the first group of Americans allowed into China. 18,000 people watched the matches from Peking's indoor stadium. Never before has a sport been used so efficiently as a tool for international diplomacy. In July of 1971, President Nixon announced that he was taking a trip to China. Nixon believed that friendship between the U.S. and China would drive a wedge between China and the Soviet Union. President Nixon and Vice President Kissinger planned a daring move that would throw their communist opponents off balance. Nixon and Kissinger were working in secret. Kissinger was sent to set up the visit. On February 1, 1972, Richard Nixon went to China for six days. No crowd was there to welcome him in the airport. Nixon was the first U.S. president to visit China, and his wife Pat Nixon was an important asset to his trip. Nixon spent his week visiting sites and talking to Chao Enlai, the premier or prime minister. Chao Enlai was the one who mainly negotiated and talked with Nixon. When in China, Nixon went to many festive events. He was even honored with a large banquet by China's sole legal government. The government of the People's Republic of China. Nixon's visit was a direct result of initial steps involving ping pong. It ushered in a new political era and the lifting of the bamboo curtain. The bamboo curtain marked when the U.S. and China began relations. Nixon felt that by warming relations with China, he would have more leverage in his dealings with the Soviet Union. Because of Nixon's visit, China won an improvement in its position in the relation to the Soviet Union. With both sides putting up a fight against the Soviets, it brought them together. The U.S. also wanted China to help end the Vietnam War. Meeting with China made it easier to withdraw from Vietnam. The Vietnam War wasn't the only major political issue taking place. The Taiwan question is the crucial question obstructing the normalization of relations between China and the U.S. Taiwan is a province of China which has officially long been returned to the motherland. If relations between U.S. and China are to be restored fundamentally, you, the U.S. must withdraw all armed forces from Taiwan and the Taiwan Strait area. The U.S. demanded that China fix the Taiwan question without using force. China firmly opposed any idea that Taiwan was separate from China. The United States government promised to withdraw from Taiwan, but the people of the U.S. didn't want to abandon Taiwan. Nixon wanted a very peaceful settlement between Taiwan and China, but when the U.S. added China to the United Nations, they removed Taiwan. China and the United States didn't meet to res resolve the Taiwan issue, only to resume relations. The communique states that the two sides will facilitate progressive development of bilateral trade and further development of contract exchanges between the U.S. and China in areas like science, technology. Culture, sports, journalism. Stay in contact with with these various channels, including the sending of a senior U.S. representative to Beijing from time to time for concrete consultations 
to the further of the normalization of relations between the two countries and continue to exchange views on the issues of common interest. The communique stated that they would begin friendly relations again. It also stated that they would expand trade and people-to-people -people contact. They issued the joint communique, also known as the Shanghai communique, in Shanghai on February 28, 1972. Nixon and Chao and Lai signed the Shanghai communique. Chao told Nixon, your handshake came from over the vastest ocean in the world after 25 years of no communication. Nixon hoped that when he and Chao disagreed in the future that they would keep their heroic and cool and not attack each other personally. Chao recognized that China and the United States should not attack each other unnecessarily, but noticed that they still disagreed on many subjects. Although Nixon only spent an hour total with Mao, he had much respect for him. Nixon commented that Mao's writings had moved China and changed the world. Mao responded only a few places around Beijing. When Nixon got back to the United States, he told the cabinet that the U.S. had established a profound new relationship with China. The visit also made support for Taiwan weaker. In the polls, Nixon's popularity rose to 56% approval rating, the highest in over a year. In 1972, the Chinese ping pong team took their turn and visited the U.S. on August 9th of 1974. Nixon resigned from his presidency. On January 8, 1976, Chow and Lai died of cancer. Mao Zedong died from Parkinson's disease at age 82 on September 9, 1976.